into order. Um, let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Okay. Do we have any acknowledgments, Dr. Lewis? We do indeed. So um, we have the uh, I have the honor today of uh, acknowledging the young adults who have provided the artwork and the photography work for uh, around the the conference room here. And so uh, I'm going to try my best not to to uh, murder the names, but uh, Sarah Matheson, Surrey Corrigion, Lily Gooden, Lacey Booten, Ava Pagan, Cole Brown, Cecilia Pryor, Danielle Lewis, Melissa Hemingway, Madison LaPlan, Eva Wilson, Tyler Hollenbeck, Lily Shaw, Hayden Prescott, Isabel DeMaio and uh, Kylie Sudell. And I think that's, they, they don't have them all up yet, but in this next month, we're going to have all of their work up. So just an acknowledgement if you would like to see these wonderful young artists' work, it's, it's all going to be circling around soon. Yes, yeah, it's awesome. Great. Well, congratulations to all of those that got their artwork featured. Um. How about the approval of the agenda? So moved. Dana Feldman, so moved. Thank you. I'm going to do a, uh, well, we don't need to do a roll call vote. Let's just all vote. <laughs> Aye. 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 You guys are going to, any names? Stenshaw. You guys are all going to have to go easy on me. I Passes. attended how many board meetings, but it's amazing. I'm really on autopilot. And just yeah. following Ashley's direction uh, when it comes to the voting and on the items we vote on. So you guys have to As long as we don't have anybody participating via Zoom, oh. we don't have to do it. Okay. <coughs> Thank you, Tony. And I'm looking to, I'm logged on, so I'm trying to keep track of myself, but definitely shout out. Help me out. How about a motion for the approval of the September 28th minutes? So moved. Yeah, Bob and second. Let's vote. Aye. Aye. Any names? Sis? Okay. Dr. Willett, we're ready to move on to public participation, which we have no. Uh, uh, one person. Okay. Person. Person. No, no one live, but we do have one individual in the um, virtual meeting. Does anybody want to put their hand up? Okay. All right. We can close that out. Jacob, how about some correspondence? It's very easy today. Okay. I received no correspondence since the last meeting. So that's okay. the first time that you? Yeah, well, it's, that's I believe theory. you, but it does yeah. feel like, yeah. wow. We're doing the cave emails. <laughs> yeah. We're still getting. Okay. Moving along. Thank you. Yeah. That was excellent. How about some points of information? Does anybody have anything they'd like to talk about? Any? Yeah, I just want to give uh, give a little credit to Mr. Swanson and the Birch Grove. Uh, we attended my daughter's first grade, what's it called, curriculum writer. Uh, and, and I think they did absolutely an amazing job of keeping things moving. Uh, the teachers did a great job of explaining. And, uh, you know, I left there just energized and excited for what Victoria is going to learn this year. So I want to thank everybody that participated in that. It went well. That's awesome. I'm happy to hear about it too. Uh, anyone else? No? Okay. We're ready for our student representative's report. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. To start off, um, fall sports are starting to come to an end. I know cross country yesterday had their senior night, and I know girls soccer is having theirs today. Volleyball, I believe, is on the 27th, and I'm not sure about boys volleyball, but all post sports are starting to come to an end. 
Okay. Uh, PSATs happened today. They were lovely. Uh, <laughs> I was going to wear my outfit from PSATs, but I decided against it. Um, and yeah, there were some fun stories. There were some not fun math equations. The Jane Austen one was, the Jane Austen great. One was great. Um, and yeah, PSATs went really well. I looked um, on the minutes from last meeting, and apparently, unless I did not read it right, our district have, has been doing pretty good with test scores. So I think that this will add on to that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then uh, pep rally, we're gonna, uh, last year we didn't have a pep rally. I think the year prior we didn't have a pep rally due to uh, riots and controversy. Uh, that is being thrown at freshmen, but this year we're going to rebrand it and call it the Eagle Rally. So we're going to make it more of a safer environment for freshmen in all the grades. And we're going to make it so that everyone feels included. And during the cap rally, usually it's for the football team. But we also want to acknowledge the clubs that have been working super hard or like the other sports teams. So we're going to have uh, moments throughout the pep rally where uh, heads of different clubs and different sports can stand up and be acknowledged for their hard work. Um, and going off of the pep rally, the homecoming theme has finally been decided. It is what everyone in the world wanted, Hollywood. Uh, I'm extremely excited. Okay, and going off of homecoming, Spirit Week. So we actually uh, finalized our Spirit Week days like four hours ago. <laughs> um, so on Monday, it is Breast Cancer Awareness Day. Uh, I think we decided to do that because the volleyball team is yeah. doing a pink out. Yes. Um, so everyone's going to wear pink. And then on Tuesday, it's America Day. Red, white, and blue. We always have an America Day. It's kind of a staple. Um, on Wednesday, it's Twin Day. It's going to be very exciting. It always is. On Thursday, it is Eagle Spirit Day, which is going off with a pep rally. Again, it's mostly just red, white, and blue, but it's uh, more so an opportunity to show off your eagle merch, to show off your eagle spirit. Um, and then Friday, this is the one that we had a lot of deliberation on. We are doing Celebrity Day. We're going to dress up as celebrities. I know some people going as Pitbull. Um, so that's going to be really <laughs> well, don't, watch, don't know what else yet. Uh, yeah, so we're going as, <laughs> so yeah. as Pitbull. Um, I'm going to do something. It's going to be great. But uh, Celebrity Day is going to be very, very exciting. And then to go into further detail about the Eagle Spirit Day. So in years prior, um, Dan, you may know that usually it's yeah, freshmen were yellow, sophomores were white, uh, juniors were red, and seniors were blue. But uh, freshmen have overall felt discluded. So instead, we're rebranding it so they feel more included. Um, Includes by doing uh, freshmen and sophomores wear white and juniors wear red and seniors wear blue. So, because we know freshmen, uh, yellow is not a school color. So, we want to make the freshmen feel included. So, we're going to make them wear white as well. But uh, yellow was always impossible to find. Yeah. 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 I? <laughs> and uh, just adding on to that, Mr. Poland was at our meeting today. Uh, and I'm pretty sure what the school is trying to do, like, in years prior, making uh, freshmen, sophomores, and juniors all wear white, and the soft in the seniors, excuse me, the seniors wear blue, because uh, red is also not a school color, <laughs> even though it's on most of the uniform. Yeah, and but, I, yeah, and I know people are against this, but like this change is good because we all want to be included. We're all working under the same environment, and we're all eagles. And that's it. If anyone has any questions or comments, yeah. Your turn. Great job as ready. always. You know, that's awesome, you guys. That's really great. And I appreciate you doing inclusivity. It's already, you know, it's tough being a freshman, right? It's tough yeah. being in that new environment and, and welcoming them and making sure that everybody feels okay. Yeah. So that's awesome. I don't look good in yellow. So. Yeah, I don't, yeah. <laughs> I don't it's not even really rough colors, right? <laughs> that doesn't look good on my ear. doesn't look good on And now they can pretend to be sophomores. Exactly. Yeah, see, that's where the controversy comes. But in the end, I <laughs> I think it's going to just bring us all together. Yeah. yeah. That's a big gap in the It's a crazy gap. Crazy. There you go. Hey, any other comments for the student representatives? No. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On to the superintendent report. 
So as you uh, as you know, the first meeting of the month has the monthly financial report for the previous month. In this case, we are talking about September. Um, overall, the budget ended with a balance of 2073042 4.97 of the board's current budget. Um, you know, as you know, we're still really at the beginning of the year. So I'll do a couple of the highlights and then um, you know, take down those and try to give you any, any information you need either now or afterwards. Um, salaries are currently under budget by about 25,000. Um, know, more in line this year with you know what we'd be normally doing. Um, we're seeing it be more like a normal year, which is uh, which is great. Substitutes available balance uh, at this time of year is not going to be is, is going to be pretty big. So we have an available balance of two ninety one. Um, you know we we have PD during the year. Subs are used for that. Subs are obviously used for illness and then all the other things. So expect that to go down. Uh, overtime cannot be encumbered. Currently under one sixty five. Again, beginning of the year. The stipends, as we talked about before, you know, pay to play, that's always going to be a bit under um, and it's going to fluctuate as we collect funds and so on throughout the year. Uh, health insurance, severance, employee benefits, such code 190, 200, 210, and collectively um, 199 under budget at this time, again, beginning of the year. Hired employees, and newly hired employees, and retired employees, as you might imagine, we're having big retirements at this moment. They've got um, so currently under. Um, <clears throat> course reimbursement unemployment, two quotes, 240, 250, 260. These are under budget. And most of these things in September would be under budget. Um, benefits consultants, workers' comp, same thing, uh, under budget by 61, legal, tech, audit. This line is 340, 350, also under, it is September, repair, maintenance, custodial cleaning, et cetera, quotes 420, 430. Um, you know, again, these are all going to be in a normal position for September. Transportation under by uh, 352. The routes haven't all been, you know, uh, they haven't all impacted us yet. There will be some special ed routes and other things as the year goes on. Special ed tuitions. Um, this is over, um, but that's also because we don't get our grants, you know, till later. So we commit all the funds and then we get the grants. The excess cost grants, as you may recall, come in in February and May. And that's when that starts to balance that out, out again. But you will see, you know, it go a bit over as we have to encumber with, um, you know, what our programming entails. Uh, energy, uh, all the funds were moved to the USIF account. Um, and that's, you know, it happens at the beginning of each year. Textbooks are under, as you might expect, uh, 86K, instructional supplies and so on. Uh, those 600, 610, 690, 730 are collectively under by. 229 because it's again beginning of the year. So you're not going to see a tremendous amount of activity at this point. Um, and you know, that's a basic summary of what we are. Does anybody have any comments or questions regarding the monthly financial report? Nope. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Sure. We'll move on to the indoor air quality grant. All right. So indoor air quality grant. Um, the September 28th Board of Agenda item included uh, documentation for a capital request, and part of it had a TIS and TMS HVAC addition. Uh, and so uh, these were requested for a couple of reasons. Um, we do have uh, temperature control with respect to children and so on. Uh, but the most recent addition to consider is the indoor air quality bill 423. Um, and it was attached in the last, uh, in the attachments for the 28th, um, as it was first talked about then. Uh, and so it was also reviewed by the Finance and Facilities Committee in August. Um, but what's happened subsequent to that time is the grant option was further articulated. And it turns out that Holland could get a 49.64% reimbursement rate on the project pending acceptance. The catch is the timeline is incredibly short. So in order to be eligible for this, um, and it would be about a $744,600 reimbursement on a $1.5 million project, um, you have to do it a certain way, which pushes up the price a bit, um, but you also have to get it you have to make a commitment by December 1st. 
Um, now the town, from talking at the town on it, the commitment doesn't have to be a referendum. There's another way that they can achieve it called non-referendum debt. That's the possible funding method they can use. Um, so that you know that would give you obviously the differential between the expected grant payment and the amount that would have to be uh, put up for it. Um, but that has to happen prior to December 1st. Um, or there has to be a commitment letter saying that you will have a referendum or have a source of funding no later than January. So bottom line is it has to happen very quickly <clears throat> in order to be eligible, excuse me. <clears throat> so, so basically tonight, I have to put this in front of you so that you can talk about it, consider it, and then if you are interested in this, then you would do the motion that I've listed here to support the district's action to apply for the indoor air quality grant and request that the town council approve an appropriation in the amount of $1.5 million in anticipation of the 49.64% grant reimbursement. That would allow uh, Lisa Hancock then to, to take it from there and uh, move forward and set, you know, move on to the council side and all of that. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a good taker, but that's <laughs> But I don't want to leave money on the table, obviously, but I do have questions. So um, one is, like, is this something that you want to go to priority districts, or are we likely to get, you know, seven or more? understanding is we would be likely to get it if, if we could make the commitment. The, the tough okay. thing is that not a lot of people, not not a lot of districts may be able to make that commitment. Yeah, I think it's very odd that it has such a tiny window, but yeah. that just strikes me as a little weird. Um, Makes it a bit. Yeah. Uh, the other question is, um, right here. oh, uh, are there any other strings attached? You said it pushes up the price a bit. Is there, how much is a bit? <laughs> Yeah. Well, you'll notice that the first request that we made when it was going to capital was one million two hundred twenty-five or something. Mm -hmm. There are other considerations with the budget uh, that you have to get. Like, um, I think it has to do with asbestos. It has to do with certain other things. You have to do compliance activities which push up the price. Yeah. Also, it's how you have to then approach the bidding and the uh, allocation of the contracts and so on. So you may not use the entire 1.5, but when I asked for the figure that would be this, the appropriate figure, I was given 1.5 in cooperation with the town because that's the figure that would most likely result in you, you know, having money come back versus you don't want to under, you know, go under. You want to make sure you have enough. And that was the amount that was provided to make sure we have enough. You're saying, then you're saying that it would still be economical that makes sense though even with that price increase this definitely makes sense if you get if you're going to do this okay. project and and i i included again the indoor air quality information for the board and it's in the packet for the public there are temperature limits and, and uh, yeah. stipulations you know so we can't for instance if um you know if uh you have a cafeteria where everyone's eating lunch but somebody has a temperature challenge and now can't eat lunch with their peers that's a significant issue in terms of equity and so on and um now that actually is talking about having to have all areas have a certain um standard uh, so we, it is going to um impact us one way or the other and getting seven hundred thousand reimbursed is better than well, the cost of the project, like you yeah, said, 49.64%. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's all from me. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> we, and I know we talked to this a little bit in FF. Before you stop for a minute. Uh, when did we have the HVAC at least guesstimated? Was that 2025? 2025. So if we did something like this, would we leave a gap in 2025 or would we pull projects forward? Well, this project's already been lifted out of your capital request mm -hmm. because the only this is the method the town would want, you know, eventually go. So you'll notice that I don't think it was in the last meeting either. 
because it was transitioning to this possibility. Now, if you don't want to do this, it can go back. Well, I guess that's true. But it's the biggest chunk of it's your still path. there, so I'm assuming we're going to take it out now. Yeah, is it in the, um, it's there in that one? Is Whatever that... one I printed today. Okay. So, <laughs> but that, that would be coming out. Okay. Yeah. I'll print the gas there. Well, in order to go this direction, which, you know, would be a different method of. So what is a non-referendum? I mean, we're, we can get a million and a half without asking permission. I was told that you have in Holland a non-referendum option. Yeah. Something in your ordinances and rules that allow you to do that under certain conditions, which I think that I'm I am told this would apply. Should you if the, the first step along the way is you saying you want to do that? And if you do with that language and that motion, if they carry it the rest of the way and we apply. And if we get it, then there is that option. From a requirements perspective, then if to, to be in compliance with, with what the state is, is asking us to do. We have to have these in place no later than that. Um, it's probably in that when we look. But I would imagine we would need to get right on top of it in the next year or two to get the project done. Um, I'll look at the timeline, see if I can pull that up. Okay. We'll talk that up and see us. Has this passed through the state for sure? The bill? The bill. Bill number 423. My understanding is that it has, but okay. it, you know, it has these, um, and it was part of our presentation from Shipman and Good. Okay, so it's definite. It's, yeah. So what was well, this? So this, when when is the state requiring then? It to be done by was that the 2025? That's the question. That's what. That's talking. what. Okay, that's what you're looking at. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of on or befores in here, and okay. so I'm I'm building up to the on or before, but um, you have to do an assessment on or before uh, 2024, on or before June 30th, 2026. Each local and regional board shall have a in place a heating ventilation, okay. so it has to be on or before. The so this, all right, so this already passed, so there's no way of getting around it. Um, my concern for December 1st is, are we going to have time to go through the bidding process? Um, well, you have to make time, a... or, or do we have to have, I guess, a specific bid? I noticed you got one from the MCOR company. Well, then you, you have to go back and follow their process, whatever the grant says. So you might have to go back out and do that again, but you have to commit by the Okay, right? so as long as you commit, the you don't have to have your you vendor the official, you know, set up and all that. Okay, so, I mean, obviously, I don't think there's any reason why we wouldn't want to try to get the 744000 I'm a little concerned, but... I just don't trust the state. My only concern would be if somehow this doesn't end up happening, have we committed to the point where we couldn't take it back? If that makes sense. Just, <laughs> but I think it's just, it's a risk. To add in there. Yeah. Chris, um, you know, if, even if this was not an option, we've got a requirement to have these HVAC or these, these <laughs> environmental things in place by 2026 uh so you pull a year year and a half of insulation out of that you've got the financial part that's another bit of a year we've got to get started now uh, so whether we use this or it goes through the normal capital cycle uh, i think if nothing else this should certainly be an alarm that we've got this train coming and we've got to get in front of it i think my concern more is that out of the 164 districts 150 let's just say we're going to fight back against this and say we can't do it and somehow there's going to be bill number 425 that's going to change the requirements and we've already committed so i'm like can we, would we be able to use the 744 for whatever the new requirements could be because i just you know, i'm just being pessimistic i don't see every district being able to come up with 1.2 million or whatever each district easily to the point where they're all gonna say sure you know you said we have to do it we'll do it you know but i don't know maybe we maybe nobody has a choice so that would be my only concern but again i think it's just i don't think we could 
take a chance. Like, I think right. we have no choice. I think we, we're going to have to do it. I would hope that if the requirements change, that we wouldn't lose the grant and we could adjust accordingly. But again, I don't have a magic ball to see what is truly going to happen with this going forward. It seems very rushed on the state's end um, without thinking it through. But I think if we've learned anything from all of our years on the Board of Ed, I don't think the state <laughs> thinks a lot through of how it really affects districts. So that would be my only question. But again, it's kind of a moot point. Yeah, because it seems like we're going to have to do it the way it's written, the way it is right now, today at this moment in time, we're going to have to do it. So might, might as well just try and get, get the money, get the reimbursement. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Willett, should we motion to move this to board action? That would be the next step. And we can make the motion to move it if you wanted to. So move. Second the motion. Let's all vote. All right. Aye. 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 Any, oh, oh yes. Uh, Christina, do you want to vote on uh, moving the indoor air quality grant to board action L6? Aye. Yeah. So I think that passes unanimously. <clears throat> so next we are at the um, committee in liaison reports. How about uh, negotiations? Jen, are we all done? Is there anything to report? Well done as of now. Okay. Jacob, how about curriculum? Do you have anything? Curriculum has a met. It's going to be at the uh, last Wednesday. Okay. Good. Perfect. Steve? Nope, we're next week. Okay. <laughs> Tony, I think we're next week too. Yeah, right, well. For policy. And uh, Jen, communication? Uh, end of the month, but I just want to give a couple of PTO updates. Sure. For Tepto, both the Lyman Pie and Castle Fundraiser pickup is 11 10 22 at Birch Grove. They have begun planning book fairs for the year, and both schools also have staff appreciation events in October, and they are also bringing back their Frosty Fest. So stay tuned for more information on that. For the boosters, the Eagle Scramble was a great success. There were 124 golfers participating and over $18,000 was raised, which makes it their most successful year yet. Um, their kitchen closed fundraisers start this month with the first being 1019 at Wellington Pizza. There's also going to be a special pizza that was created by THS students called the Screaming Eagle Pizza. November's will be at Camille's, December's will be at the spot. Um, and then I also saw that yearbooks are on sale now for $75 and can be ordered online, that seniors are reminded to submit their baby pictures, and that the Fallon Project, Project Graduation Bottle and Can Drive is 1119 from 9 to 1 at THS. Did I miss any um, committees? Oh, oh, yes, correct. Mental Health Task Force. I just wasn't at the last meeting. Yeah. Um, good news with that is we have uh, the survey out now uh, for the town, so that's going to be open about a month total. But that's running till so you got you don't have a full month of that. I think it's going to be up to the end of October. Um, so we'd like to take that. And That'd where would great. we find that survey? Uh, in there's is it on the town web? Yeah, there, there's a QR code somewhere yeah. when I was walking through the development here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, somewhere else too. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna ultimately post it on our our thing too. I just yeah, yeah. so there's there's a point, I got the barcode up here if we can share it somehow, but um yeah, there is a barcode going around with a flyer. Yeah. Well, it's also posted in the past. Yeah, I saw it on Facebook. Yeah. Well, it was also in the past. Right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, if you're looking for the survey, just reach out to one of the members of the mental health task force. Yeah, we'll find it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, that's my PSA. That's pretty much it. Okay. We can move on to the chairperson's report, which there's none today. So on to board action. <laughs> We've got some obsolete and surplus equipment. Talk about that for a so, which is a favorite. Do you know, at favorite home can follow here. along. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. <clears throat> Obsolete and surplus equipment, uh, as you know, occasionally we'll be requesting that things get transferred as per policy 3040 uh, to dispose of our obsolete um, surplus or other materials. A THS Hamada offset printing press model VS 34 L2K in the graphics room is obsolete. The offset press is expensive to operate. It is very difficult to maintain. And the machine is no longer working. Um, uh, design and the jobs it performs can much more efficiently be done with our printers. So this is a huge paperweight and they'd like to move it on and perhaps the town can scrap it for metal or something like that. Um, and so as, as per the process, we would put it in front of the board to ask you to declare the item listed in a one of the October 12, 2022 meeting as obsolete and turn it over to the town in accordance with the policy. I'll move to declare the items listed in item L1 of the October 12, 2022 viewing meeting as obsolete and turn the items over to town in accordance with the Board of Education policy 34. Second. Any discussion? Although I'm curious to know how old that machine is. Well, the fact that it's called a printing press. Yes, <laughs> that's what made me want to ask. And that. I really makes you think, how big is this? So, I mean, it's not terrible. Like, how much for space? First, uh, like, sort of just doing, no matter what. Classroom. All right, well, why don't we vote? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Jaden? Aye. So I, I'm sorry. Oh. I just, I had, a, I, I think of this, could we give it to the um, historical society or something? If it, if it relates in that regard, I don't know exactly the machine that it is, but that's the first thing that came up. I don't know, but I, sorry. Mm -hmm. sorry. Yeah, you can give it to the town. The town can. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're, right, I got you. Any nays? Okay. Pass this unanimously. Oh, oh, Chris. I'm so sorry. I can't afford it. I'm so sorry. Hi. Thank you, Tony. Okay, so that passed quickly. How about the healthy food certification? So, healthy food certification, it is not deja vu. We did have this before. Oh. Um, and so, what happens is occasionally they'll make a tweak. And then to make sure that there's no chance that we would not be reimbursed for this, we then will make that tweak in language too. So this is represented. Um, I talked with Abby Kazan Harnett, who's our food service director. There was something that they needed to tweak. And so they tweaked it. This language represents the change. Um, and so the motion tonight is taking in and voting or they're making sure that we vote to incorporate considerations one, two, and three, and that uh, you allow me as a superintendent to authorize the healthy food certification and allow for those exceptions that are listed here. And essentially it's one, two, three. So if you vote to do that, then we are able to get the reimbursements. Um, the last normal year we had prior was about $14,000 in reimbursement. This is a little weird of a year because, you know, as you know, there's subsidy making most of the meals um, at no cost for uh, for people. However, there will be some as we get in segue to paying for these again that we would be getting reimbursements on. So we want to make sure we do that. Any questions or discussion? Just a question there, Dr. Wheeler. I don't know what you're saying. If I look through one, two, and three, <clears throat> they all specifically talk about the healthy foods as far as it relates to meals and food products offered for sale to students. Does that also apply to what essentially is being given to them? Um, good question. Right now, it would if you're handing it out during times when food is being served. So, so for instance, lunch. So like you can't, it, students couldn't buy a bunch of Domino's pizza and distribute it every day during the lunch waves or certain things, because that would be something that would, uh, would be contrary to this. But they can do it after school or outside of hours anytime they want. So even if there's no cost, there are certain things you cannot do during the day. 
based on this or based on another? Based on the Healthy Foods Initiative that you have to adhere to do this. It kind of connects. So, you know, that that's the thing, you know. So sometimes uh, people will say, well, why can't we just have a, you know, this kind of thing during the school day? Well, you can't because of this reason. Uh, for the healthy foods piece. If you're going to get the reimbursement, you have to comply with that. And then so by by approving the motion as written here, it relates to the three, which then tie back to the healthy foods initiative. Does the is that link written or is that just understood? It's just it makes reference to it. It does reference. Yeah. Well this here I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? I'm trying the healthy foods initiative that the doctor yeah. talked about. My question is, is it written in here that that relates to that healthy foods initiative or is it different here? I guess, and really it's the, it's the healthy food that. certification. Right. People call it initiative for that one time it was. Yeah. It, it refers to the healthy food certification to get it, you have to comply with their, yeah, with their uh, rules. And it does have reference to the, the law, you know, CGS 1021-5F. It does. Um, yeah, it's up here. I see. Okay. And there's nutrition standards that go with it. So those really, yeah. even if we're not having them take they, Yes, they're very, uh, Ms. Kasten Carter would hate me to say that they're unexciting, but they are. They're wonderfully exciting from a nutritional point of view. Lots of great nutritional things in there. I'm sure that it's wonderful on a poster. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No Coke machines. No, uh, <laughs> those are an artifact of our time, not this time. And we did enjoy them. Mm -hmm. Another thing I saw too, and I know this isn't totally this, but nobody really saw that young fourth grade student that uh, got the vegetarian option, yeah. the vegan option put on TIS. On yeah. 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 And so, okay. yeah, it was really cool. It was just so a couple cool. weeks ago. Fourth grader took it upon himself and Mr. Dean and worked on that. That's pretty fantastic. Like we're talking about, so I just figured I'd bring that up. Amazing fourth grader. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, any other questions for Dr. Willett about the healthy food certification? Anyone want to? Oh, uh, motion to allow the superintendent to support and authorize the 2022 2023 healthy foods certification and to allow for the exemption of food and beverage items as well as other provisions as indicated in the considerations one to the other. I'll second that motion. Okay, let's all vote. Including I there she is. Okay, so that passes unanimously. On to Holland High School Broiler. And I think when I sent you guys the agenda, I called it the broiler. By the way, mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody caught that. Yeah, broiler conversation. So this item basically, um, you know, it, it had a couple of iterations to it. There was a meeting last night, and I sent some information to the board. Um, we kind of update you this afternoon. It kind of took some unintended directions and you know things to try to get to a point of uh, resolution. Um, the short version is that the council last night voted five to two to allow the use of the UISF fund for this. Um, but a little bit of history on it. I don't know if you had a chance to read what I put out, but I will try to just kind of give a summary that is, so, you know, more, a little bit more expansive than that, um, because this was the original communication, you know, between us and the town to consider things. But, um, you know, the, the longer story, which I'll try not to make too long, is that um, boiler number three at the high school experienced problems um, in the fall of 2021, which is October 18, 22. Um, period of time. And so when it started to experience its issues, it was shut down. And, you know, I went through and checked with Edomus and, and tried to make sure I had everything right. Um, 
from October to November, it was shut down. From end of October to early November, it was shut down. They removed the insulation. They removed the exterior, um, whole process to try to figure out what was going on with it and determine that it had cracks. Um, from December to all the way through August, attempts were made to get information from um, the supply houses for the availability of materials and quotes to determine what the impact would be in cost and time to repair it. Um, the manufacturer could not give the supplier information because the manufacturer could not get any information with respect to its own supply chain. So that cascaded. Um, and so it took a very long time to get the actual quote um, of what this would take to repair. The official quote came in on August 18th, 2022 for um, repair and replacement options. Um, when that came in, a second quote was obtained by September 9th. Uh, 2022. So it took that time to get these quotes for um, for repair and replacement. Um, the submission to insurance at that time was considered because this was looked at as the failure of a, a, a unit that, you know, ultimately you could go to your insurance for. Um, and so that was the first approach for this, which is why it really wasn't looked at as a capital project. It was something that broke at a high cost and we'd go to insurance to repair. Um, when that was talked about, um, there was a conversation as that was explored that if you do that, once um, you have the numbers, you know, you can do it, but that would impact the clean claims rate that we get. And we have a very good rate right now because we don't have a lot of, you know, things like this happening and we're not putting a lot of things like that in. So we've actually been able to achieve this clean claims rate and the funds recovered would actually be provided on a greatly devalued unit. So we would be getting back, you know, if we got something, we would have potentially affect that rating, what we pay more over time, and you're not getting the full cost of the unit. You're getting some fraction of it, which would require some other amount to be allocated anyway. So when that was discussed, um, it was brought up that, um, you know, a submission to insurance might, might have it, some perils here. Um, and the installer of the unit had been out of business for many years at this point. So we couldn't go back to the installer of the unit um, for any respite from it either. THS boilers number one and two were expected to last another seven to nine years. And so at the time, it was known that they could sustain the necessary environmental conditions. Um, it wasn't seen as an emergency, but it certainly was seen as something that you know, needed to get resolved. Um, because you know, if you had another complete failure, which was unlikely, but if it happened, then you'd have trouble sustaining your temperatures in the building. So as the concerns were insurance were raised, the option of the UISF fund was mentioned by a town official as a possible alternative to the situation. And when that came up, um, shifting from insurance, which is again, why it wasn't on any of the capital pieces, because that was where the route was going, that's when I started reaching out because it became, you know, an allocation of that fund. And so I sent Ms. Griffin an email when that happened. And then I reached out to the um, board leadership, I think the next day. Um, ultimately, we got it on the um, agenda planning meeting so that, you know, it could get in front of um, the board. Um, the email that I sent to Ms. Griffin on the 4th said that I'd like to try to get it on the FFC agenda. I think I said the 21st or the 19th. Um, but it was the next FFC. And um, and so trying to get those, you know, those mechanisms in motion so that if we were able to use that, then we could transfer this money from this uh, BOE uh, filtration, I'm sorry, not BOE, boiler filtration system that, you know, isn't, isn't as important as the boiler itself to the boiler itself. So um, ultimately, you know, we were able to start to move that forward. During that time when I was sort of sending those emails out a bunch and in, in, in trying to get those things um, set up so that um, we could get you guys in a position to make a motion if you wanted to do it, uh, I was informed that this needed to go to the council immediately. Um, I did express some trepidation because the path that I normally would kind of expect here would be coming here and then there, but that there was something about the timeline of that, you know, that made that extremely important. Um, and so, you know, I guess part of the rationale was if the council was, gonna, was going to say no to the UISF use, then when it was brought to the board, you really only had two choices. You would either be go through insurance and risk that change in the rate and all that, or 
putting it in the capital request that you're literally approving tonight. So I guess the timeline was looked at as if you're not going to be able to use Yusuf, it would be better if you, you know, knew that prior to having to make that capital request and or, you know, make this something that we just ended up going to insurance for. So that's how that kind of all unfolded. Um, and I think um, I, I wasn't fully you know, expecting to, to go last night, but then, you know, it seemed like that would be a good idea when I reached out. And so um, Pete and I attended virtually. Um, and so the day of the TC, you know, meeting, there was a feeling, well, you know, can you come and would that be a good idea? And it was felt that it was. So in the meeting, um, as I said, it was supported by a five to two vote, but there were concerns expressed by some town council members regarding the timing, for instance, AKA, why was this presented only now? The problems were experienced in October and questions about replacement versus repair. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wanted to give you sort of the full scope of it. You know, when this first came up, it didn't seem like it really seemed like, okay, can't do insurance. There's this option of Yusuf and here's this way to go. Um, you know, that night there were quite a few questions about the time, which I didn't expect because that there wasn't where our minds was on it. It was an insurance thing prior to this, you know, potentially. So that's kind of, you know, approaching it. That was sort of something that uh, had been fully anticipated um, from a narrative standpoint. But really why it came up, you know, when it did is the functioning boilers were estimated to last a seven, to, you know, another seven to nine years. And um, that's why they're not in capital and the insurance for this one uh, was the first thought. Uh, the functioning boilers can sustain the you know, environmental conditions, the supply chain and material challenges delayed acquisition of um, the needed quotes and information and materials. It was originally considered an insurance item and the use of the UISF fund was mentioned as maybe a way to get out of that in late August, early October, which is when I reached out to everybody on that. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, the boilers had an expected remaining life beyond the current capital cycle of seven to nine years. So again, that's why they're not in there. And the replacement cost is more than three times as much as the repair cost. Mm -hmm. So the controls are kind of an add on to it, but roughly 60,000 for replacement, I'm sorry, roughly, roughly 60,000 for repair, it's 188 to 207,000 for replacement. So that's about three times more. The repair can happen more rapidly. It's about four weeks versus about four months, to give a perspective. Um, and this kind of repair is typically something you, you know, maybe put to insurance, but um, one of the issues with replacing one unit is it puts it out of the cycle of the other units. So if, if you replace just one, and then nine years from now, you're replacing the other two, you might have to, you know, first of all, there might not be as much of a cost effective purchase if you buy you know, and you can buy them all together, you might get a better purchase. There also might be engineering considerations because it may not be the same model. You might have to have different models. They might have to have additionally different kinds of uh, engineering pieces to it. So it was looked at more as a repair than full replacement. Um, so that was, those are the answers to, you know, why the timing and generally why it's repair versus replace. Now, having said that, they voted five to two to, to provide you the UISF fund. So the thing I was going to ask you to do, they did. Um, so I would still ask you to do it to authorize, you know, to have you authorize it too. But they have already, they have said that they're good with it. Five of them said that. I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry. I have to um, excuse myself. I've come straight from school to volleyball practice to here. And I need to shower. <laughs> but thank you so much. Thank you, board. Thank you, Dr. Willett. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Have a good night. I'm saying because I want to procrastinate, but I'm not going to come work. So. <laughs> Do we have any questions for Dr. Willett about the EHS order? I have so many, so maybe I'll go last and see what everybody else has. <laughs> okay. I'm curious about the the insurance conversation. Um, and, and correct me where I err unusually, uh, but from what I understand, we, we've got this insurance to be able to pay for these repairs or replacements for these critical units. Um, 
why are we why do we pay for the insurance we don't want to use? Well, I mean, the, my layperson's understanding of this is like when I had a five cent nut go in my house, it was seventy thousand dollars of damage. Right, and then my insurance went up for the next three years after that. And I think it's a similar model in that we have an excellent rate right now because we don't really have a lot a lot of large claims. If there's another option for doing this, it saves you that rate out into the future and, and, and now as well. So I think that was originally where people were going with this. The option of Yusuf came up as a helpful, helpful suggestion. And that's how that, you know, that looked, hey, you've got this thing. There's no point in having filters if your boiler's dead. Why don't you get a you know boiler with that? And that was I will repair the boiler with that. And that's how that kind of came about. I guess yeah. I mean, I'm just concerned, you know, we just 20 minutes ago, we voted to ask for a million and a half. Um, and and we're, we we know that we've got bills coming down the pipeline. So the, when these critical have to items come up, you know, we've talked before about having to get creative as far as where the funding comes from and, and making sure that we're, we're, we're not just breaking the bank now. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, I'm a, I'm a little... I can check, I think. Well, your benefit for use of this, it, it literally was designed for things right. like that. But if we're more, and, and I'm not saying we are, but I'm trying to articulate this best. Uh, if we're concerned that our clean rate stays clean, then we're not going to use that insurance when we probably should. Uh, in this case, there's an alternate. But the next one, because, you know, you said these next two boilers have between a seven and a nine year uh, life. So a couple expected of to last expected. three, seven, not more. But had we, had we asked probably three years ago, then we would have been told that boiler two had an expected life about the same as boilers one, two, three. So are we looking at the two remaining ones? Do we have somebody coming in and really giving them a look over to see that boiler three isn't one crack hidden beneath the old insulation away from the I think that's always the, the fear is the crystal ball, right? Like what could happen? And, and most of the time these units, they rust out from the inside, you know, um, so the heat and the minerals and all that. But um, the way I the way I, I see also using a lay person's perspective, you know, if um, your, your child uh, bumps your car into another car, you might pay the repair on that $1,000 to avoid that going to your insurance because you can afford the 1000 but if you put that into your insurance with your kid who's less than 25 years old, you're going to pay rates now for the next three years that are much, much, much higher. And I think, you know, when it's a certain amount of money, it may, you know, it may make sense. When it goes over a certain amount, it may not. And I think that was the thought is, hey, you know, rather than do it this way, you have this UISF fund. It's set up for this purpose. You contribute to it with your energy money. Um, when we transfer that energy money over at the beginning of the year, any that's not expended goes into the use of account for the purpose. Specifically, I think at one point, these kinds of boilers and things were mentioned as a use. So that was a helpful, you know, hey, why don't you do that? But by spending this money, by spending this 60K out of the use of fund, if I heard you right, it's we will not be spending it on the, the water system. Uh, which I think it was an FFC when, when Pete came in and was talking about, uh, I thought that water system was something that is important as well. Are we saying here that we can do without? Well, you had, when you used to be with Tolland Water, and now this is going back, and I'm not criticizing any group or anything. My understanding is when Connecticut Water took over, it, it helped a lot of your systems. Um, there were some issues with some, some issues. Right. And so that helped, but um, the time that you did have the, the prior arrangement, I think that's what Mr. Stavo was referring to. There was a span of time here where you had that. So they've been monitoring that and other equipment. The, the units that are there that didn't crack and fail do not appear to be having the same issues. And otherwise he wouldn't, he's, you know, he's pretty good about putting, he's very good in every way, but about putting things on that he feels like he needs to be on there. Right. That's why those weren't on there because they appear to be functioning and they don't appear to be having any issues. But the reality is you can never, there's about 50 things right now that if we had the money to magically replace them, you know, you probably would because you don't know, you know, they hit the 20 year mark or whatever. Um, 
But when they're functioning well and they look like they have a, a certain amount of longevity, like our football field, you know, we got that rated. And the good news behind the football field is it rated better. It rated better. So you don't have to make the expenditure now on that field. These are seven to nine. You don't have to make that replacement for those now. How do we start seeing that? Uh, because your football field is a great example. And I think this, this ties in as well. We really don't see them until all of a sudden it's a, hey, we're going to have to redo the football field and have to pay for it. And it became all of a sudden the, the, the battle rhythm got high. Uh, this, I completely understand what you're saying as far as the failure mechanism and the, the need to repair or replace it. I think your staff is completely on it. Um, it just makes me curious about, as you said, those, that other 50 things. What are we tracking for 2025? Well, so <clears throat> my rudimentary quick answer to that would be your capital process does have most of that in it. So your, your, your field was in there. And I think what we got into was whose responsibility is what piece uh, that's what needed to get solved. But you do have, and now, uh, you know, uh, working with Ms. Griffin, we have, you know, we're, we're talking about it as early as early August is a first run through. So, you know, we've had in this particular case, you know, uh, when you're talking about Capital Next, you've had a, a, a good view of a couple of these and you've seen how they've changed and changed as, as grants become available, all that. Um, but in any case, going back to this, you know, I think it's just a matter of people's good intentions that there's an option here versus, you know, maybe a less. No, I, and I don't want to, I don't want to come across it. I'm arguing the, the good intention. I just, I, I'm trying to make sure I've got my mind wrapped around the lessons that we can learn from this experience and so we can move forward. Okay. Um, I don't know whether hand up first Christina or Jacob. I'll, I'll go with Jacob and then Christina. I don't want to have a question. Okay. Um, so to the insurance uh, point, like what is the amount that you consider sufficient enough to take the higher rates? Well, I, I don't know that amount. You know, I would say that uh, I think if you can avoid something hitting your insurance, yeah, if something hits your insurance, you tend to, in my layperson's experience, you tend to pay higher rates later. Uh, if you can avoid it and, it, and there's a method of avoiding it that has been established. So for instance, the way I look at it again, to bring it to a layperson's perspective, is I put away money for the car right now, every month. I have very old cars. One of them is 202,000 miles, the other one's 87, the other one's 100,000, right? I don't want one of them your car right now, but I have that. You know, and when it breaks down or something happens, I'll take from that fund before I'll go to my insurance for something, if windshield, something like that, because I don't want to pay a higher rate over time. In my opinion, they get it back plus some. And so I think that there are times when, if you have an option, and I look at the UISF fund, that was a, a you know, going back to Steve Werner's time, that was a smart move. And what you have is this fund that is sitting there available and, and for things like this. And if that option can be used and you can use it instead of drawing on your insurance, you know, using the layperson's example, I don't replace the, you know, when should I buy it rather than using insurance, then you don't have to succumb to greater you know, rates for this one. You never know what's down the road. Yeah. So if you take it on this and then the glycol system blows up and there's leaks and the thing comes down and you take it on that and you take it on the next thing, you're just, it's compounding potential impact. So where you can avoid it, it may be worth is there an avoidance? So I think what's I just ask you because you know, eighty-five thousand. It's not. It's not a small number. You know, so I'm not sure what the. If my kid pumped my car for eighty-five thousand, we'd have to. Well, yeah. you're taking an institutional. You know, we're using a personal example, applying it to an institutional yeah. center. But it's similar. I mean, it's, it's still not like a small number. I mean, if it was, I don't think we'd be having the conversation at our at this level. Um, so I, I just was curious what the what the math looks like for that. And then the second thing was, you mentioned that council voted on it last night. So I think this is the first time we've kind of really dealt with the use of fund in this way. So what, what really are we voting on here? Is it, do we have like a choice? Like the town council voted yes. Can we say no or is this just- But you can, I mean, you can, you can say thanks, but no thanks. However, it right. is the board's money. You are actually using, there is an allocation that filters down to the town side and the board side. This is the board's UISF fund. So there's, it's in your, 
for space, uh, what you're doing is you're allocating an amount that was already going to go to filters to this because it's the fastest way or easiest way for that county to go uh, from the town. But the motion here is basically, I didn't anticipate that happening in the sequence it happened when this was all being put together and the timeline was being put together. I thought maybe you were going to do this and then, but understandably, the, the feeling of getting it there sooner so that the capital process could play out also makes sense because you need to know if you don't have the approval for that, you'll have to either ask want to add it to our capital plan or go through insurance. Okay, I'm just curious. Never, never really dealt with it this way. Uh, I'll let this go. I'm still okay. patient over there. There's square. Lord, thank you. Thanks, guys. Um, my, I got two questions. I just, in my gut, I feel like it could potentially be more cost effective to replace it instead of repairing it. Um, I haven't had that much time to review any of this and just in the timing of the information. So could we use the USIF to funds to replace the boiler instead of repair it? My understanding is you could. Um, it's a, I don't know the specific balance. At the end of 2021, you had 263. I know you have the 85 because it's already allocated, uh, but you could use the USEF fund for a full replacement. It's just that that isn't what was right recommended or approved last night. But but to you answer your question, yes, you can use USEF to replace something as well. Okay. Uh, and then my second question, uh, whether we service it or replace it, we got estimates. Are we going to bid publicly for this service? Um, if you're repairing it, and he's got estimates for the repair, I mean, he would follow the protocols that are necessary for that. So the decision has been made on what vendor to use, pretty much. Right now, right now we have uh, we have quotes, but I mean I can go back and find. Yeah, I can go back okay. and look at. It. Right now there's two. Um, I think that's what we one well, the replace 188 to 207, and the repairs about the same. Okay, that's all I had. Thank you. Ms. Griffin, okay, so that was one of my questions. So we have 263 in the use. Well. As of the uh, last document I saw, which is 2021, I, I don't know that I was looking for an updated one. I'm sure that it's somewhere, but I don't, I didn't have access to it right away. Okay. So, I you know, I know that we have the 85 because it was earmarked for already for right. the filtration piece. I think it would be important to know um, what's in there. And that is our money, for lack of a better way to put it, that is Board of Ed designated funds. Yeah. The, the document I had to give you an example had something that the boards was like 260, that kind of 263 or something. Okay. That is the board's UISF account. Okay, version. so that's our money. It's our money, technically, but we have to request being able to use it for certain things. Is that how that works? Kind of like COVID relief fund and ERF and all this other fun stuff. Yeah. Um, okay, and doing it this way. We were trying to avoid basically expensing this eighty eighty five thousand dollars out of our budget. So this was kind of the option. To yeah, not the have the eighty five thousand hit our budget. We could we could do it out of this because it fall, falls under the use of. Yeah, I mean, originally it was a, a huge repair, you know, repair mm -hmm. that insurance you know would be looked at to okay. recover. But then the use of was brought up. And yes, essentially, then you take it out of something that you're already contributing to okay. for a rainy day purpose. Like this. So if we repair it, how many years would we get above, say, boilers one and two? Well, my understanding of the, the paradigm of the repair is that it'll be more in alignment with the, the life of the other ones because they were in, put in the same time. 
Okay, so we so don't you're, get us really anymore. Yeah, you're it not. It gets us back to where we just, started. My understanding is it puts it right back about in the same span of space as the seven to nine years. Then when you are replacing all of them, you're replacing them with the same models and units and whatever are available at that time. It doesn't require any additional engineering. It would be three times the cost, you know, right now, et cetera. And I, I was at the meeting last night. I didn't know that they were talking about this. Um, what was the reasoning for the two people who voted no then? Why did they not want to use the use of money? Did they give um, explanations? Yeah, the, um, I put it in the document. Oh, sorry. No, 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 don't be, it's fine. It's, it's long. Um, did, uh, I think the two during the process of town staff the meeting. Mm -hmm. Basically, it was um, why was this being presented now? Only now the problems were experienced in October 2021, and um, and thoughts about same thing that was brought up brought up about replacement versus repair. I think there was a feeling that you know just replace it, um, and then the other feeling was just I mean like why. This wasn't a, a, a way of doing it. That's my read on why. You'd have to actually ask the people who voted, but that's my. Okay, I'll, I'll yeah. definitely read those in the next Um, I have to say that I I'm kind of in agreement with Christina. I think we need to look at replacing it. I think eighty five thousand dollars for a repair that doesn't extend the useful life of it. I I just that would be my thought. I think at this time I I would like to see us look into replacement. Um, and I would actually like to see if this could fall under any of the ARPA money from the town. Would they get $1,000? Well, that, <laughs> um, think... I'd love to know if if any of that could be a possibility for, for something like this, since it was, I don't want to say it's a surprise because <laughs> we've known about it for a year, but if it's something that we might be able to get funding through that because I mean I think the I don't know what the final decisions have been for the ARPA money, but I know they've moved stuff out of their capital budget to pay for stuff with the ARPA money. So it'd be nice if we could work together and maybe come to that. So that would be my my hesitation on it's not necessarily using the use of money, it's using the use of money for the repair. I would like to see us look into using it for replacement. Um, if replacement's going to get us another 20 years out of it, I'm not really sure what a boiler um, would be, but that, that would just be my thought. I feel like the 85 is just a Band-Aid, and in seven years, that Band-Aid's going to fall off, and we're going to kind of be right back where we started, so why not look into funding replacement? Would you want to fund the replacement out of the use of money? Yeah, if it's a possibility, sure. Why not? If, like I said, if I'm understanding the use of correctly, that that's people always say our money, their money. Yes. But if it is board of ed earmarked money, and this is uh, the right you know thing that falls under what it can be used for, then sure, I would think that we would want to look into that. Thank you, Jen. I thought. Reading the narrative that came out earlier, I thought the issue with replace over repair was that it was going to take over four months to replace, which takes us now out of this season where we're concerned about if one of the other, if there's a problem yeah, with one of the other boilers, school having to shut down, whereas we can get a repair done within four weeks. Right. Right. And naturally, the questions that come up around it are that, you know, and so that one of, one of the reasons listed here was that. Yeah, it's four weeks versus four months. And, and the uncertainty of even those four months, it took a long time to even get where we are, um, the, the manufacturing units and their availability. The, you know, obviously you have some good ones, they have seven to nine, but what if, you know, if one of them goes, that could be potentially issue prone. Um, same thing like your tire, you put a, you know, you put a, um, I already thought that it's with a, small tire on there, the donut, the donut thank you. Yeah. Uh, you put the donut on, you know, you can only go 50,000 miles an hour for a certain amount of time, for a certain number of, uh, you know, miles. So I think that's the feeling is that, you know, well, if, if it's going to cause issues, maybe 
when you go to replace the other ones, you know, maybe cost effective or more cost effective to do them all at once. There may be engineering issues if that's not the case. And it's four weeks versus potentially four months. Get it done for a third of the cost. Make it extend for about the same time as the other ones go, seven to nine. Um, those were the thoughts. But understandably, you know, that question comes up. Those are the answers to those kinds of questions. Yeah. Yes, I'm just making sure Ms. Griffin oh. is done. Um, I would just say I just still have a really hard time in using our eighty-five thousand of our use of money if another boiler could go and or this one could go. I, something else happens. I just have a hard time using our savings account for a repair when I feel like if it's a repair, we should be using our operating funds. We should be using our savings account for an actual. Replacement. That's just the way I feel about it. Jen, do you have anything more? No, no. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Dr. Lord, uh, did you say how many quotes or estimates we have? There's two. There's two. One just two from two different companies where we have a repair. So we have a repair. No, there's uh, two different companies. Two different companies with a repair in place. Okay. Yeah. We have a few of those. So, and then if we needed to, we could get. More quotes as well. Yeah. If, if it, if it sort of I mean, I, yeah, I would imagine it's just the companies, you know, yeah. got two solid companies. That, no. Yeah. Yeah. No, I understand. Um, now, so like, what is, I mean, other than Pete and his team, what is our yearly maintenance plan on these things? Like, I know we have, you know, maintenance, our maintenance team coming through there. It's really like I have got to come in and <laughs> go through my stuff every, once a year to make sure. Obviously, there's things behind that you don't necessarily see. Mm -hmm. um, do we have a, a yearly maintenance plan with an outside vendor? Yeah, they, they, he uses New England. Right? He uses they, they come in. He uses them for. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So um, they they come in and do the regular maintenance and the checks. Yeah, and they're very reputable. They're. Fantastic. But absolutely. That's why he had confidence enough not if Pete was worried, these would be in your capital requests, you right. know, right, right away. It's just that you know this process plays out as it does, you know, mm -hmm. your options of insurance use if or otherwise mm -hmm. are up there. And and ultimately there were reasons why there was uh, the replacement wasn't sought for this right oh. now. And, and the town didn't offer um other when the conversations occurred, yeah. UISF came up. ARPA didn't, although ARPA came up that night, it didn't seem like that was looked upon. That doesn't mean that maybe it wouldn't be, but it seemed like, you know, what came up was, hey, how about Yusuf? Right. Instead of, hey, how about, you know, something else? Um, and the overall recommendation from New England Mechanical and MZ or MCOR and the other vendor, I know that they quoted us both repair and replace, but what was their professional recommendation? And the reason why I ask that is because, of course, you know, if you're anything like my husband who wants to always have a, a newer car, so the warranty is taking care of all the stuff. When you have a longer car that gets older, then you're paying a lot of out-of-pocket costs and repair. Um, but did they did they give you uh repeat or whomever their professional recommendation? Well, I think he in, in the way he talked about it reflected the information he had been receiving. For instance, you wouldn't say that he thinks. Seven to nine years of it, if they were saying this thing is done, right. this thing's gone. Right. Uh, so I think that's where he got he gets his information from them, and that right. was reflected in him not putting it in capital, okay. not doing you know not originally asking for a replacement, um, that type of thing. I also think that again, check the minutes, talk to these individuals yourself. That I think there was a concern about taking a too much from this, right. that taking the the you know 60 plus controls, which is the 85, was taking a certain amount from Yusuf, but taking 200 from Yusuf, right. that might be a lot when you have energy impacts coming. Mm -hmm. That there's going to be some changes in energy costs in the future, and that maybe taking the repair amount now might be better than, as some people use the term, I wasn't crazy about it, but rating. You know, you're rating yeah. it right now for 200, it might be taking too much. So I think again, I am I'm that's my take on what they were saying. And no criticism for the word rating. It certainly gives the you know the idea of the purpose, but I would well, yeah. And I guess I guess my concern is it's a catch-22, right? Like 
Yeah, I mean, your $85,000 repair, that's expensive. I mean, that's a big ticket to pay. And, you know, the 207 or 188, 207. But I guess my concern, and I think before COVID, I would say it's a slam dunk. Let's replace it. Let's move forward, blah, blah, blah. And being in this industry of HVAC, I see, I see where things, we would order stuff for our business and even my next door neighbor's business. They are waiting a year for a part. They had to shut down half of their business because they couldn't get that replacement, that piece to be replaced. So it, they had to repair the thing. Then there's, then I guess I get concerned about the delays on parts and replacements, let alone, I mean, parts, let alone the replacement. Um, you know, we ordered stuff last winter. I got it in the spring. I ordered stuff in the spring for summer, new equipment and new things. And I got it recently. Like I literally just got, I mean, air conditioners and it's going in the heat. So, I mean, my company would love to, so, <laughs> I'm being sarcastic because this is a, this is a cash cow, right? If, if it goes, if we lose our heating in that school, we have to heat the school for those kids to be in there. And four plus months, and I hate to say it this way, but I don't trust those four plus months to replace. Um, not with not with COVID, not with supply chain, not with any of the stuff. And I, you know, I even, but again, conversely saying the same thing, I get scared for parts to repair. So um, it's the catch 22, but I read, and I, and I get the timing such, excuse me, I get the timing situation because it was just put in front of the council. I, you know, I, I feel horribly for you and Pete for someone advising you that that was what the best thing to do is because it's almost like you walk into a situation where it's like dire straits, right? So it must have been a tough situation overall. And it's tough, like Jacob said, this is, we're doing reverse. This is reverse. We haven't engaged in this use of backwards with the town council doing that. But I guess I'm talking myself in circles. But I, I honestly, I get very nervous with supply chain right now and that four or five months to replace it. Very nervous. And then I get nervous with our shutting down the schools or God forbid having to outsource heat to come in and you're paying tens of thousands of dollars for rental equipment to heat your high school because we don't have the unit, yeah. the boiler. And looking at that boiler, that's not a, that's not a fun piece of equipment to repair. And I will say, New England Mechanical—they're the whole package. I mean, I don't know who who else. I mean, I know that they run our other thing, but um, they're electric, they're electricians, they're plumbers, they're mechanical contractors. So they're bringing the whole team of that. So I, that's why I was asking what their end all advice would be. But I just get really scared of supply chain with this. Well, that has been a struggle. That has created lots of frustration and craziness. Yeah. You know, from components and parts to fully constructed yeah. items. Um, as you were talking, this is what I was searching for. That's the most current thing that I have at the moment. As of June 20th, uh, board's balance is 398 and 25. Now, again, that, that may not be the most recent, but that's, that's roughly where we're at in June. They took the whole 200 from the honeymoon settlement on their side. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, <laughs> what does that say? <laughs> so it, this information. That would pay for our boiler. <laughs> so that's, uh, but that's to answer that question, you know, you're 85 out of potentially 400, you know, 398. Well, I've listened to everybody's comments and, and I think Everyone's made some really awesome points, but I'm with Dana in that the the need for the repair is there because of just the winter season. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we are kind of between a rock and a hard place. We've got to repair it. We've got to get it going and make it functional. And I think um, that we've already have the approval. It just makes sense to me to, and I would be in favor of just repairing it this time. I think it's risky to not do so. And I do think, Griffin, you've got a great point about replacing it because it is a big ticket item, but I just think it's risky. And I also think like what you had said about COVID, we don't know what's coming down the road. We may need those funds mm -hmm. for something else that we can't even predict. 
Does anyone else have any brief, brief. comments? Jaden, I'm going to go to Jaden next because Tony, you already. I was going to ask Dr. Willard a question. Dr. Willard, when I was in, I want to say it was seventh grade. I think that was around the time. I think you might have just made the jump to your, your current position. Uh, but in the middle school, there was an HVAC system, I think, being installed um, that year. Something along yeah, the Yeah, geothermal. Yeah, the geothermal. So, so there's there were systems being installed and whatnot. Um, and I, I, one memory I have from that was there were so many issues with, with fluctuating temperature. <laughs> That it became an issue. I mean, every day of every week for for the end of the school year, I think. Um, and so, but my my question is: Could you foresee that same sort of reaction coming from if we just full on replace it versus if we you know get by with the repair for now? Yeah. Well, to to connect to your memory of it, um, that project didn't cover the places that um, need to be covered now under the conversation we're still having. Um, so um, I think most of the fluctuations you experienced had to do with the presets that were required under the hunting hunting program. Yeah. So if you were in Miss Cassidy's mm -hmm. room that was hit getting hit with direct sunlight, mm -hmm. you could put that thing as low, you know, to the lowest point of the set point, you were still yeah. pushing close to 80. But if you were somewhere tucked in the corner, you know, on this on the first floor you'd be almost cold. And so even with that unit, you'd have some fluctuations from each one. Um, but I do think, in, you know, in a case like this, you're talking about a heating, you know, this heats the building. And it, it's the, you know, in a way, it's sort of the backup. The backup is kaput. Get another, get the backup going. Thank you. Tony? Yes. <laughs> I just want to say, you know, after, after certain things about it, that, those boilers, all three of them are our system. You know, and I, I think when we look at replacing, we're going to want to replace all three of them. I'm not a fan of having a one-off unit sitting in the middle, be it for the utilities coming in, but also for the controls. I know that we're talking about it. It's going to be difficult to try to balance that. Um, the primary thing is knowing that in six or seven years, We've got six or seven years of state requirements that are going to come in. As we are seeing now, they've got no problem changing our environmental requirements. Uh, so if we repair this one, we get ourselves the, the extra capacity, at least for six years, then we can go in and we can switch that whole system out. We can plan for it. We can put something in that's maybe more environmentally friendly, that's more control friendly, but we can do it as a whole rather than having to find something that fits I was just wondering, so if I remember reading correctly, this broke last August, August 2021? Or did I read? Um, yeah, there's, uh, there's a document um, or dashboard that kind of gives the full chronology, but that um, in uh, October 18th, to somewhere in the zone of the 18th to the 22nd, they started to experience problems with this boiler and they troubled, you know, brought in and tried to figure out what was going on from October to November. It was shut down, they inspected it, they removed the insulation, they removed the exterior covering, um, and it was determined that it had cracks. So then from December to August, they were trying to get the quotes and all that. Okay. No, I was just wondering when, it, so we got through a winter with two boilers. And I know the argument is, you know, if one, another one breaks, then you'd have to shut the school down, but we've already gone through a winter. I don't know. I think we may have time to look at a, another boiler, but Tony made a valid argument. He may have changed my mind uh, on the repair. So I was just throwing that out there. <laughs> I'm all set. Thanks, Sophia. Griffin, my only last thing would be if we're going to go with this $85,000 repair, if boiler one, if the same thing happens, then I get what you're saying, but I don't think we do another $85,000 repair at some point. I think we just need to be aware of the fact that we might at some point have one boiler that's mismatched. <laughs> and I'm not an HVAC person or an engineer. I don't know if that throws everything. Up. 
I don't think we have seven years. Mm -hmm. For the other two For boilers? Two. I, mean, I, I understand, I understand what you're saying. I also understand, you know, that you've got your uh, preventive maintenance company that comes in, but your boiler developed Cremex. Mm -hmm. uh, my confidence that if we were to strip away all the insulation on the other two, we wouldn't start seeing some of the things as well. I think whatever's happening is happening across the board. board. So, so does this segue up with the capital budget? Do we put a boiler out in fiscal out there with 28? The yeah, mm -hmm. just to have it on there. Good idea. We need, to be, we need to be talking about it. We can't let it sneak up on us. Okay, we're we're ready to be proactive. Thank you. Sorry. Well, um, I think if there isn't any more discussion, perhaps we could have a motion. Could do that. Yes. Right. My motion sure. here. Uh, move to support the reallocation of the use of funds earmarked for filtration to boiler and control repair and installation. Second. <laughs> okay. Let's all vote, including Ms. Ford. Aye. 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 Amine. That passes with I don't know how many eyes and one nay. And um, okay, so we can move on to the Birch Grove primary closeout. All right, so I'm going to uh, give you a kind of run up narrative here. I do see that uh, Ms. Murray is in the audience, so she also is a great resource um, for questions about status, but um, as the BGP project you know, comes to an end here, uh, the construction closeout process requires the BOE to accept the project as complete. Um, so the minutes of a favorable motion are sent to the Department of Administrative Services along with a completed EDO 49. Now the EDO 49 used to be a piece of paper, now it's an electronic submission. So we get board approval, then we make the electronic submission. But I do have a paper copy of a, you know, what that looks like generally, but it is not done on paper. So what I would show you tonight is, is a paper version of what is actually in electronic. Um, the project um, can be moved to close out status after the contractor has been paid in full. The final payment has been made to the contractor, Demato Construction, on June 30th in the amount of 90,111.72, check number 673.944. Payments in full have been made to the architect, furniture and fixture vendors, testing labs, project consultant. There's no outstanding invoices or payments requested for this. All of the financial records, executed contracts, and minutes of the project, and other correlating documentation are available at the town hall. So there is a motion requested of the board to approve the completion and closed out status of the Bridge Grove primary uh, construction project 142-0083N. Um, what I did do is for the board, um, for any references that uh, Ms. Murray may make, um, I put all of these relevant documents in case you want to look over them. The one I made reference to, this is roughly the figures that will be put into the o, you know, 049 uh, form. You can kind of see that again, no longer done on paper, but this is what that looks like. And so you have access to these, and I, I hand the floor back to uh, the Sheikh, and then I want to hand it to Ms. Murray. Yes, Ms. Murray, do you have anything you'd like to um, inform the board about this topic? No, I um, I hope that uh, you guys knew this was coming. Um, you know, the school's been in use for over a year now. Uh, and really the reason it takes so long to get from students being in the building to tonight is uh, it's, it's paperwork. Um, and I would uh, reach, a, I would give a shout out and a thank you to Pete Staba on the board side and Bev Velody on the town side uh, for the amazing amount of paperwork involved in this project. Uh, but as Dr. Willett summarized, you know, uh, all uh, bills have been received, reviewed, approved by um, everyone and paid. Um, and at this point, we need to close out the project so that the last holdback that the state makes, um, and I think it's about $8 million, um, can be paid to the town uh, to kind of balance our books on this project. So uh, this is a procedural thing more than anything else. Um, 
my understanding is this is uh, this project went very smoothly. Uh, I think uh, last time we had to close out a project, it involved lawsuits and stuff. So uh, this is this is going really well, um, and I I am happy to answer any questions. But I'm very excited to see this project reach its completion. Awesome. Does anybody have any questions or discussion for either Ms. Murray or Dr. Willett regarding this closeout? Yeah. Oh, let's say Dana. Yeah. Um, I just want to thank uh, you know Katie Murray and Joe Mateus as a chair and co-chair, you know, of, of the committee. It was a lot of work, not just in the committee meetings, but like beyond that they spent. Um, I mean, this is a lot of the town paying stuff, you know, reimbursement, and like you said, a lot of paperwork, and um, but the entire the entire committee of you know bipartisan committee really worked very well together. Some said there was a uh, contentious conversations, but that what brought us to the beautiful school that we have to house our students. Um, and I'm excited, you know, I mean, just as excited as we were that first day of opening school last year with Mr. Swanson and Ms. Gugliera and those kids going into those buildings and not being in the portables, and then continuing, you know, this year, I think this is, you know, we miss being at Bridgeville, our family, but uh, just a fantastic job, Katie, to you and, and the leadership on that. So I appreciate that. I agree. Thank you to everybody who was involved. Yeah, a lot of work. Okay, are we ready to have our motion? Um, I'll move to approve the completion and closeout status of Birch Grove Primary Construction Project 142-0083N. Second. Okay, let's go. Aye. 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 Okay, passes unanimously. All right, we can move on to the capital budget. Don't look at all the way. Yeah, of course. Okay, so um, you did see uh, as we kind of went from August to now, when FFC looked at the price, we had a look at it on the 28th. Um, I put this document together in an attempt to give you sort of a rundown of, of you know, each of the steps here, and then ultimately, um, kind of where it landed, um, based on and this is the thing with Google mm -hmm. and Plus, and making it my mess. But you have access to the document, so you can blow it up. Um, people can actually expand this um, when you put it out there. Um, but it, the adjustments made here, you can see that these are Mr. Holtz. You know, this would be where um, these two items are. I think it was uh, ultimately the, art, I keep calling it the artillery, <laughs> the articulating lift, the cafeteria tables. This is 2028. And Ms. Griffin had that moved out to, um, you know, to the whoa. When <laughs> opportunity arises, it's not like, whoa, that's so expensive. It's, yes. Whoa, when opportunity arises. Um, and so, you know, I just let, I had to have it somewhere total, but I wanted to represent what the two perspectives were on that. So it totals over here in the well, but it, it also is place held here, should the board want to do that. So those were, um, you know, two of the other things. I did also sort this by, uh, by priority. So as was requested, you see that the high and then the medium, as you noted, there's really, there's no low, <clears throat> but there is, um, there is the medium woe, um, and then there's the high early years and the high you know, later years, the uh, medium earlier years, the medium later years. So you can almost see the priority in terms of you know, generalized medium, high, low. You can also see where it falls in the sequence of years, which does talk to a little bit of the priority, but it also talks to sequence of when things can be executed. Um, that's generally how that's looked at. From a financing and facilities perspective, is sometimes some things can't be executed all at the same time. It just isn't enough resources, time, or people. Um, the other piece is what I tried to keep here is the town mods. The blue, I couldn't do everything in one one page. So this is the sequence of the priority, 
it is the category of funding and it's reflecting the changes that you mentioned. The blue is some town modification of where that fell. So the blues are things that are funded, but were touched by the town. And, uh, and the year comes straight down to the bottom. But I couldn't also show where those prior position was without making it even more complicated again. So this was just, you know, that's what the town touched. That's where it fell for years. Here's the categories these are in. I mean, here's the prioritization. Uh, that was my best shot in getting it in one page and reflecting the changes. You guys are fast. Okay. <laughs> um, so I like, I like uh, Tony and Christine's suggestion, putting it, those two up in WOA. Um, a couple questions. So one was earlier in the meeting when we talked about the, the grant for the HVAC system. And I think you had mentioned because it's funded through that way, taking it off the capital um, budget. Did I hear that correctly? Because I think it's still on there. Yeah, what'll happen is it'll shift to the funding mechanism would be different. Okay. What is the purple code then? Newer, okay. So you might want to put that somewhere like in the- The purple is the, the, purple's the yeah. new- yeah. The it's actually the pink, right? Oh, it's the pink. pink is the new. The first one's the one. Yeah, usually, <laughs> usually, what I'm back. It's, 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 okay. I, do, I have very, you know, standard that was pink to me. <laughs> okay, and then so we were keeping it on. We're just changing the color code. Okay, and then the, the second thing was, I know Ashley brought this up last meeting with the the man trap and the radios, um, and taking those out of this budget and funding the ER, through the ERF. Um, I, I just wanted to bring that up again because I'm not sure where we landed on that as a board. I think personally, I think if they're putting in high priority um, and if we communicate properly, I think that's all that we get funded, funded. I think the case is pretty convincing with that, but I'm interested to see if anybody has any thoughts about that. <laughs> I just read the oh yes, please. Yeah. Um, I think I was the one who brought it up. Oh, the year, the oh. year at, and that was only I think if they denied it. Yeah. That that was kind of a fallback for us because okay. they're important to us. But if they for whatever reason don't, because I think the issue with that was more we wanted to do it sooner rather than later. Okay. So if they say yes, but they want to put it into a bond that's not going to be yeah, done right. until 2025. We don't really want to wait. But yeah, if there was a way to articulate to them that those were really important and we'd like to somehow see those be done in 2024. Yeah. Um, really 2023, but I don't think we can actually move them to 2023, even though I'd like to, but. Um, so anyway, sorry, just wanted to clarify that. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I'd be angry with that. That's a great segue in a conversation about everything being high and even priority, but uh, that's a that's a discussion for next year. So that's all I have. Okay. Uh, just one clarification, David, to what you said. Uh, I am not a fan of putting those in the low. Okay. Uh, and I think Dr. Willie has it articulated up there. Uh, in my mind, the well is, you know, when opportunity arises, suggests that if you have the additional funding or the opportunity, those projects could be done as early as 2023 or 2024. You know, it's kind of that grab bag to, to spend the funding and the resources. Those projects, uh, for example, the articulating lift, uh, I think are low, low priority such that we don't want to fund them at the earliest opportunity. We want to kick them out and fund them later at some other point, uh, which is why if you look at Dr. Willett's chart here, uh, my recommendation was putting them out there at 2028 uh, along with the tables, which you know that far out essentially just says we, we're tracking it, but we have no plans on funding it. I think we kick it out to that list rather than the one. I just found that <laughs> oh, right. that, that makes that makes sense to me. I'd be comfortable with that either way. Um, and I just kind of see like 
those two are related, but I think I see them just slightly differently. Um, just for context, I see like the lift is something that I'd like to cooperate with the town on for reasons that I think we've covered in the past. Um, the tables, um, I, I would I see those as a true low priority, as in they will need to be replaced at some point. They will be 20 years old at that point. Um, but does it endanger students or is it like a uh, it's not a real impediment to learning? No. So. I think when we start to look, and you know, nothing in the I think you did a wonderful job of trying to herd cats and, and say everything on that one piece of paper. Uh, but when we really step back, and, and today's a great time to you know to have that conversation. But look at all the capital discussions we've said just today that that aren't articulated on here. Um, we've got three or four different conversation threads that aren't linked. So when we start saying, hey. Six years from now, we've got three boilers to replace. We've got HVAC systems in the middle school and TIF that are going to need to be done. We've got the fields. We've got all of these things that we keep looking at from a preventative basis to trying to figure out where they go from here. Things such as the articulated lifts and the you know the, the other one that we had down there in the low. To Dr. Williams' point earlier, we've got to figure out if it's actually a need. Or if it's something that there's another way of doing, um, we're, we're just not going to have the funding to do even the inquiries. Anyone else? Um, I'm actually fine. I think Tony had convinced me last meeting to move the two things over to 28. So if everybody's in agreement with that, I I completely understand where you're coming from. I think that would be a good idea. I would like to now after our boiler discussion. I think there should be a line item in there for boilers. I guess I would say 207, the high end times three. Um, I think we should put it in there so that the town, I think they probably know it's coming, but just to kind of put it on the radar. And then my only other question, Dr. Willett, I mean, the bus lot paving. The TIF window glass replacements in the district wireless access points. So kind of these yellow in the first two columns. Where did those land last year? Because those were all on last year's um, spreadsheet, correct? Uh, I can pull up last year if you want. Um, I I'm would, just like, do I, we? So they would have been changed. changed. I think the yellow yeah. probably where they were. They were approved at some point, maybe yeah. even like the year before them. Maybe yeah, because that has 22 and 23. That is last and this year, you know, approved last year. Approved for this year would have been approved okay. last year. And the year prior would have been approved for 22. You know what I mean? Right. This, okay. this is a five-year plan, but really what you're looking at is these five here. The other extremities just kind of give you reference for what happened. Okay. This is more of a what happened kind of thing. Um, but I can pull up the last year's too if you want. No, that's okay. I just wasn't sure. Like I know the blue was all what was approved and, last and year. And it could have been moved around a little. Okay. That's what the blue, the yellow, I think, is what state put. It still was approved. My only other suggestion is we just scroll down a little bit. Um, I don't want the town to forget. But where you have the town modifications on the blue, can we put town modification slash previously approved in the 22-23 capital budget? Mm -hmm. Just, I would say something like that so that they know that, hey, you've already said yes to this. So really don't even, don't even look at these right. because you've already approved them. Yeah. But, but other than that, I thought that you all know <laughs> I'm big on my one pager, but I thought that this definitely was a little bit more clear to follow although maybe it's just because i looked at it so much <laughs> but but thank you for for putting these changes through just uh i want to make sure i'm following so uh, we're moving the articulating with cap tables to fy 2028 as mr holt suggested mm -hmm. the blue we're changing is, is adding to you know pound mod pound approved right mm -hmm. what was the other there was something else i right? think we should add in the boiler the Add the boiler in, in this to 28 using 207 figure times three. Oh, should it be medium or high? I don't, I don't. I think you're going to have to do medium for now. Medium, okay, medium. then put it in 2028. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any other discussion or questions? Just like to come with the HVAC system. So the, the one showing 1.255 million, is that the accurate number if we do the grant or is it? No, so the higher? grant, I think in the language yeah. somewhere north of this is 1.5. Yeah. Okay. What should that be? I don't think you can yet. In, until the grant is given to us, we need the budget for the expense. Okay. That's fine. Mm -hmm. So what this could be is motion for capital budget in you know, twenty two to twenty eight with the changes made in the meeting of October twelfth and authorize the superintendent to convey it. I'll make those changes tonight, set it to tomorrow. Okay. Yes. Uh, I'll move to approve the DOE cap on the request for fiscal year twenty three through fiscal year twenty eight and authorize the superintendent to provide it to the town manager for consideration. Okay. Okay, let's go. Aye. 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 Okay. Passes. And now we can uh circle back to our L6 indoor air quality grant and vote on that. So back here again. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, move to uh, I move to support the district action to apply for the indoor air quality grant and request that the town council approve an appropriation in the amount of one point five million dollars in anticipation of a forty nine point six four percent grant reimbursement. Second. Any any more discussion on this? One quick question. Sure. Doctor Willis, that forty nine point six four is that a set percentage or is it a graduated type? Well, it's designed, it's for this town. So you okay. may not get the same somewhere else. Okay. So That's if we were Collins rate, if we were Windsor, it'd be a different number. Potentially, I don't know what their numbers, but yes. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay. Let's vote. Aye. 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 I'm going to abstain just because I wasn't here for the beginning of the meeting. Okay. That passes. job everybody <laughs> great work okay now we can move on to public participation and comments are limited to items that are featured on this agenda do we have anybody that would like to participate i'm here to just uh watch take enjoy my, yeah i'm enjoying the board baby pressure yeah, <laughs> I did enjoy the open house last week at the middle school. That was great. It was sixth grade. My son just started there. So, so great. Okay, well, we can close. Yeah, I don't see anybody um, online. So, I think we can close that out. Um, anybody have some points of information? Well, just a quick captain. The Birch Grove um, instructional rounds. Is that date set? And October do we have a time? Twenty seventh. It would be from not, roughly nine to noon or one. Okay. October what? Twenty seventh. Yeah. You know the thing is, we're going to try to figure out the perfect arrival time because if you come straight at nine, you're in every bus. So we're going to give you like find it and tries to toggle that. Yeah. But that range is definitely that way. We could ride the bus. Okay. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> right on board bus driver. Better be on time. <laughs> uh, Tony? Um, I just want to uh, give my thanks to Ms. Griffin as far as the capital budget. I uh, know this is the first time that we've done this where we've looked at it multiple times and really kind of worked it and adjusted it. I mean, there was a lot of conversation in, in the FFC. With Griffin as the chair and with Dr. Willett, all the work that went into it. Uh, I think for the first time you know, since I've been on the board, I'm, I'm happy with what we're presenting. I think we're getting a good product uh, that we can stand behind. Oh, that to your hard work, uh, both of you. So thank you. Yes, go ahead. And I know I mentioned it when we were talking about the healthy food, um, but I just you know wanted to 
you know, say that it's a fantastic school system that we're involved in that afforded the opportunity for this young student, Henry, uh, this fourth grader, to come to the administration and be brave to say, hey, I would really like some food on my menu that my peers and I can eat, you know, but and instead of bringing lunch from home. And I, you know, from what I understand that they welcome that lunch services and uh, Mr. Janine and Ms. Merritt and the team really worked with him to get something that was realistic on the menu. And that just shows um, what our educators are doing to provide our children and our students with this empowerment to do it. So I, I think that was just a fantastic situation. I know I briefly talked about it earlier, but you know, I just can't say enough about you know, how we're educating our students and what this student was able to accomplish with the support of the staff. Because we need him. We do as an acknowledgement and we thank him for mm -hmm. good. having the guts to plan that. Yeah. I mean, you get that, we have acknowledgements. Yeah, yeah. I think I, that would I, be fantastic. Uh, I, I think that takes a lot. For, it takes a lot for a grown person. To right, do yeah, so, right. Their own yeah, yeah, good idea. It, really quick question, did that change in the um, um, intermediate school or all schools now? So I know it's on TIS. I would assume TIS and Birch Grove. I know that they don't have the same things every day, but they do have similar menus. So I I don't want to say I know I can get back to you on that, but um, it didn't take away my cheese pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone have anything else for points of information? Okay. Well. I think we can entertain a motion to adjourn. So we'll second. Okay, so let's vote. Aye. 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 Christina? Aye. Thank you, everyone. It was a wonderful meeting. Yeah.